Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Angel and the lighting will probably change 25% into this video. I asked on Twitter <laughs> if you guys wanted to see a discussion. It's going to be a messy discussion on What Big Teeth by Rosabo. This just came out, I believe, early February and was one of my most anticipated books of 2021. Additionally, before you get too far and too invested into this book, I I'm going to put trigger warnings in the description below. I'm not going to put them here yet because I feel like some of them unfortunately are spoilers. I'll try to keep the first half of this spoiler free and then the rest will be a discussion and an open forum for discussion on what the hell happened in this book. So this book, let's read the description together and see what we were getting ourselves into. What you see isn't always what you get. Eleanor Zarin has been estranged from her wild bloodthirsty family for years. When she flees boarding school after a horrifying incident, she goes to the only place she thinks is safe, the home she left behind. And when she gets there, she struggles to fit in with her monstrous relatives, who prowl the woods around the family estate and read fortunes in the guts of birds. Eleanor finds herself desperately trying to hold the family together, all while trying to make sense of a re-engaging power that seems increasingly linked to the reason she was sent away in the first place. In order to save them all, Eleanor must learn to embrace her family of monsters and tame the darkness inside her. How much of that is true? That actually is a pretty good description without spoiling anything. This is a YA book. I know I don't typically read YA, but that is becoming less of a sentence that I can say. I've actually read quite a lot of YA recently. Overall, had the setup of being a phenomenal book, but the trigger warnings and other things abound. Let me jump in with some of the themes that we're going into here. This is a very gothic old home, kind of like in an old town. I want to say this is pre-cell phones and pre-internet because there wasn't a lot of communication. However, when Eleanor is taking a, I want to assume it is like an Amtrak from Massachusetts, Philly, something. She's going up through New Hampshire into Maine because Maine is where this book takes place. It almost felt like it was a little bit more modern, but the rest of the book takes place without any mention of cell phones. And so it was kind of timeless from the vibes of this like gothic, dark, um, looming book. I felt like it was in the past. There was also this ever present like feeling that Eleanor the main character is an outcast from her family from the town her her family in and of itself is outcast from the town she's welcomed when she gets to town but again like there's a sense of like don't go to that house on the hill like that that feeling without going too far into the characters or what their like powers or monstrous ability is there is a very witchy vibe around the entire book. Um, some of those things don't unravel until about halfway or beyond when there are like for some reason a, a, an enormous amount of like events take place from like the 60 to 70 percent mark on. The entire book is about family. Questions, things that happened um, with Eleanor and her family members in the past and why she was sent away why her family still kind of sees her as an outsider as she comes back into their home. I don't feel like I was connected to her while I felt like her character was relatable. Like I felt like I could deposit myself at times into her character in the story. I feel like she was kind of almost like a faceless character. Like I didn't feel like she was well developed, but all of the characters in the book are extremely memorable and have these sprawling descriptions of them and past that is like drawn out throughout the book. And they have these stories to tell. And I felt like it is very much a book about characters. Also, let me change the lighting. I will be right back. I felt like I was connected to almost all of them. I want to say my main character that I loved was Reese, which I believe is her cousin. I just wanted, I felt for him and I felt connected to him, but I didn't know enough about him and I wanted more at all times. Like if there was a sequel about the events that happen that is, are off page here with him and another character, I would want so much of it. Like I want to know how we got to this point. Right now though, I will mention the trigger warnings. There are trigger warnings for homophobia. This was something that I went into this book knowing from Wheezy. Wheezy mentioned this on Twitter and said that there was like rampant unchecked homophobia. And I think starting at like 240 or something is when I started to clue into it because there is a specific character. The main character's grandmother starts to make comments about another character. It's kind of on page, but nobody is outright declared as like, I am gay. Not a spoiler, because I'm not going to include names, but this person says, I want to take you into my confidence. He is not showing a proper interest in girls for his age. A young man from such a fine family should have some prospects. Talking about this woman that they brought into the home, a girl, 
for this love prospect and they say she has a certain something that I think he might like. She almost looks like a boy. Acknowledging that this character is interested in men and yet saying, oh no, we need to fix that. We need to make sure that still with a woman, but like, you know, a boyish woman. It continues from there. Something else is just like a general like body horror, violence, blood, gore, death on page, death of a grandparent. I believe there's also an on page death of a child, like a young child. I want to call it slavery situation. Somebody is being forced to work for someone else. There's a spoiler in there, but I can't say what's going on. Yeah, the big thing, the big killer here is the, the homophobia and the slavery for me. That being said, like I mentioned before, I am obsessed with the characters, aside from the fucking homophobic ones. I gave this book a four out of five stars. And now we're gonna talk about spoilers. <laughs> I really enjoyed this book overall. I listened to it on audiobook, even though I own the physical copy, and I'm going to keep the physical copy, probably reread it and tear it apart at some point. This was still a very well written book. I think that the author tried to portray homophobia in a way that is shedding light on the darkness and evilness of it, but didn't have people fighting against it. I think if you're going to have homophobia in a book, there needs to be retribution against it. Reaction, not just letting it continue to happen. And unfortunately, when they do eventually fight against this character, it's not for the homophobia. Like it's not, there's no retribution. There's nothing, there's no resolution. Let's go down the list of characters and my thoughts on them. I would say from here, we start off with Eleanor, obviously our main character, like I mentioned, it was kind of that like empty head kind of thing. I didn't feel like there was any personal growth. And I feel like it, sometimes at the sake of the plot, she was being used as a device for other things to develop. So toward the end of the book, at this point, we know that there is like some sort of werewolf-esque monster gene in her family that she does not have. And then she has this more like witchy, magical, it's kind of like an amalgam of a bunch of things, but she has the ability to like eat people, but not eat. So like she just opens her mouth very wide and like engulfs someone and then she lets them go again and she has full control of them mind body she also has this ability to like use her voice in a certain tone and tell people what to do it is something that was passed to her from a different part of her family line she comes back to her old family home at the beginning of the book because she attacked a girl at school. I was more interested in her family pretty early on. The first one being her grandmother Persephone, who was the person who sent her away and is very much the matriarch of the family. She dies very early. She's trying to read the cards for Eleanor and she picks a card that is like, oh, I never put this here. And she like just <laughs> dies. Like it made no sense. And I still don't have an answer. I guess that's number one. Point number one, what the fuck was the card? Was it just like a cursed card? Like what caused the card? Like there's no reason. There's also her husband Miklos, who is a werewolf creature. If I didn't mention Eleanor is more of like the witchy, like she reads cards. After that is Reese, Eleanor's cousin. And he is the one that everybody talks about being the next in line to, I guess, take over the household. But unfortunately he's really not when uh, Eleanor takes over is the character that I was talking about earlier that is portrayed as gay. There is like a sense of him having a relationship and wanting to have a relationship rather with another character, Arthur. There is a scene between the two that is constantly referenced in which there's like a hidden doorway. Reese comes like tumbling out and he has like scratches on his neck and like bruises, which I assume are hickeys, but I'm an adult. Maybe I'm just looking too far into things. And he looks like hungry, I think she says. He sees Eleanor and is like, you didn't see anything. And it's like this huge secret. Which brings me to Arthur. I, I think the reason I liked Reese so much is because there is this sense of like, he's done so dirty throughout this book. Like at the end of the book, I think he's pretty much brain dead and it was painful. It brings me to Arthur, who is my second favorite character. Arthur, as things come to pass, you find out that Arthur is literally being used as a slave. For this family. I'll go into that in a little bit more when I talk about what Miklos and uh, Persephone have done to him. Because of things that happened to him, he's not able to tell everything that's going on and he is very easily manipulated and forced to do things by the, the family. Let's dive into what happened to Arthur, the slavery part of things, and the death of the child. That's another thing that happened. You come to find out at like the very end, the, the end of the book was such a like, it wasn't rambly. Like I listened to the audiobook and it was tolerable, but like so much that could have been the entire book happened in the last like 
quarter of the book. When Miklos first came to Maine, he came with Persephone, it sounds like. Um, and so they were already together and they knew of one another's powers and they came to this place relatively wealthy and decided to build a home. And they, when they were building the home, they actually hired people from the town. And so everybody really liked them at first. There was a teacher in town named Arthur. Miklos actually meets him and they start a relationship. Again, I can't tell how much I'm inferring because I'm expecting like romance and sexual encounters in an adult book but they start a relationship more or less on the side. Persephone kind of gets a drift of this. She's like, oh, you're befriending this man. Like you're talking to him a lot. And like this, it, it seems off. And so she goes into town and she also meets Arthur at the schoolhouse and comes to realize like, oh, this is a very beautiful man. This is a very like attractive person. And so her intent originally is to also have Arthur fall for her so that she can wave it in front of Miklos's face. So she starts to have a relationship on the side with Arthur. And Arthur is young and just kind of like a pushover even back then. He doesn't have much autonomy over his decisions, I guess. He kind of just went along with the flow and let people make his decisions for him. And starts to he starts to be like invited over to the house for them to like all have dinner together. Both of them are like rubbing one of his legs under the table, trying to like make the other one jealous. And then they all kind of just like don't talk about it. They're all kind of having this relationship with Arthur. And then Persephone becomes pregnant. With that, Arthur kind of goes away for a little bit, but he eventually is invited back to the house. Says so after a year had passed, they invited me to the house again. It was different. There was three of them now, Miklos, Persephone, and a baby. But the baby wasn't right. It was too big, too strong, already running around on hands and feet. I knew about Miklos and the baby was wild. It had no control. A few times I saw Perse Persephone scoop it up to hide it from me while it changed shape. About a year after the first visit, one of the girls from town disappeared into the woods by her house. She turned up a few days later, disoriented with bites in her arms and legs that had been gnawed at. She had, be, had to be sent to the hospital in Boston to be treated and didn't speak for weeks. While we ate rabbit stew, I decided what must be done. I decided that it had nothing to do with them abandoning me, that it was the right thing to do, that it was what anyone would do. It, it really sounds like it's m more selfish than selfless. And he kills the child like they like I think they go into another room and he like goes and kills it. This obviously sends Persephone into a rage like she completely loses sense of like her own sense of right. Between her and Miklos they attack and almost like dismember him and then Persephone pretty awfully mutilates him. Puts this curse on him that now he will do whatever she says and he will do whatever the family says and he will be completely obedient to them and at times she literally like makes him just like dig a hole in the basement and tells him like when I'm when I say you're done digging this hole you're done but keep going until then and then she made him create his own coffin and um when she's done with him she like tells him to go and lay in the coffin and I think there was times where she said that there were like maybe weeks, months, years that she just had him stay in that coffin and would not let him out. When eventually all these other characters come into play because all of this happens before our book, before any of our characters are born, when it is now time of like Reese and Eleanor, Arthur is still there and still obedient to the family. He's just there, he's just around and at times he's a teacher to them, at times he is just a companion. For me, things get very icky with his relationship with Reese because Reese is attracted to him and I can only assume this scene in which Reese is like coming, stumbling out of the closet from having been with someone, I think he was having an encounter with, with Arthur. That's the inferred thing here. Reese has feelings for Arthur throughout the book, but because Arthur is not a, he's sentient, but he's not capable of commanding his own actions. It's borderline assault and rape and whatever happened off page. There's also instances where Luma is attracted to and wants Arthur to be with her. And so she'll be like, let's go for a walk, Arthur. And he's like, oh, if you, if you wish, and he just can't not go for a walk. And I don't know what potentially happened between them off page. And it just gets into this realm of like uncomfortable, un non-consensual things. I, I, again, I might be inferring, but there's a lot of questionable things that are happening off page. And even if you don't think of those, like the fact that she gutted this man and turned, her, turned him into a puppet uh, for her own pleasure and then never freed him before he died. But this is a very intense concept, I feel like, for a YA book. I feel like it was ultimately unnecessary. Like, why couldn't you have just had him be a zombie 
and had none of this weird torture plot line, this weird murdered child plot line. Like why couldn't he just be like a friendly uh, vampire or zombie of the family? But again, I gave this fucking book a four star because it is written very well. I just wish that some of these very troubling and problematic disgusting plot lines did not happen. If you're still here, thank you for watching this ramble. I'm gonna go eat some burritos and try to read a book that I'm supposed to be reading. If you've read this book and you have any thoughts or any concepts to share, let me know. If you were just here because you don't wanna read it or maybe you read it and I would love to chat with you down below. I'll see you next time, <laughs> bye.